Hello and welcome to the How To Show with Johnny Guns. In this video, I'm going to show you how to read and flash your NAND with the correct image to complete the reset glitch hack process. First, let's open JTAG tool made by Cool Shrimp. Select the new dash reset glitch option. Then select the console that you have installed the QSBs in. In this case, it's my Jasper Elite. Choose the NANDX as your device to read and write to the NAND. Here's the option we used last time to program the Cool Runner. Just hit continue to proceed. Here's where you'll be reading your stock NAND. To get started with the read, just click the read NAND button. Depending on the size of your NAND, this may take a while. Okay, you're done with your first read. Just hit any key to continue and you'll be prompted to save the bin file. I save my files to the desktop for the tutorial. You can name the file what you want. It's more appropriate to name it NAND Dump 1. I name mine differently for the tutorial. After clicking save, it will show you where the file was saved to. Click the read NAND button again to get your second read. However long it took to read the first time, it'll be the same the second time.
Okay, you've completed reading the NAND twice. Save the file just like you did before. It would be appropriate to name it NAND Dump 2. Again, I'm naming mine different to keep myself organized for the tutorial. JTAG tool usually detects the second read and compares the NANDs for you. If it doesn't, just hit the compare button. Okay, when everything matches, you'll be ready to create your ECC glitch file. First things first, let's get organized. I saved my NAND reads to the desktop so it will save me some time getting to them. Let's put them in a folder with a good identification to keep them organized. Alrighty, on to the next part. To create your glitch file, click on the create.ecc button. You'll need to locate the file with your NAND dumps in it. Go ahead and choose one of the NAND dumps. A DOS program will open up instantly, creating your glitch file. This doesn't take very long. Alrighty, you now have a glitch file built to flash back to the Xbox's NAND. Hit any key to continue. You will be prompted to save your file. I like to save it in the same file as I keep my NAND in. Right here you'll see a CPU key. This is from prior usage of the program, but we want to get your CPU key. With your NAND X connected to the Xbox, click the write.ecc button. Select the ECC file from where you saved it. Another DOS prompt will open and the ECC file will be written to your NAND. Okay, the glitch file has been written and it's time to go over to your Xbox. Here, I'm turning on the Xbox with a normal power button. Click the disk eject button instead. After a little bit, the console will boot into Zell Reloaded. It will just take a little bit to get to your few set information. There it is. Few sets 3 and 5 are the two keys that you need to put together to get your CPU key. I recommend using a camera to take a snapshot of the screen for easier access later on. What you're going to want to do now is write the CPU key all together in Notepad. Just the key, no other text. I have already done this and saved the text file in with the NANDs. I then copy and paste the CPU key into JTAG Tools Step 4 location. Now, just hit the check key. You will then be prompted to load up a NAND file. Use your first red NAND. Success! You'll then be led to creating a freeboot image, but we'll use 360 Multi Builder for the latest dash. Open your 360 multi dash folder. Double click run to open the program. You can see all the different consoles right on the main menu. Since my console is a Jasper 16 megabyte NAND, I'll be selecting two on the menu. 360 multi builder gives you easy instructions on how to set up your files. All right, let's get everything set up. Go into the data file and look for my 360 folder. Go ahead and double click into that folder. This is where you're going to be putting a copy of your NAND and the CPU key files. Just copy and paste your two files. Make sure the CPU key file is named properly and only the key is saved inside this file. The program will not make the image without everything being properly named. If your NAND files are like mine, you're going to have to change the file name to NAND dump and hit enter or click outside of the file. Okay, you're all set and ready to choose how your new image will be made. Let's go back to 360 Multi Builder and choose our console. Again, since my console is a 16 megabyte Jasper, I'm choosing two. Next, we'll choose what kind of setup we're using. I'm selecting one because I'm using the Team Executor Cool Runner. 
I'll then choose number one again to have Dash Launch installed for future uses. There's other options for custom launches or you can just choose three to build without Dash Launch. Again, I'm selecting one for Dash Launch included in the build. 360 Multi-Builder will now build you the full image you'll flash back to the Xbox. That's it! You completed everything necessary to build the proper reset glitch hack image with the latest Dash. Read the closing statements for some helpful information. Okay, now, go to 360 Multi Builder's folder and double click on Data. This is where your final image was stored after being built. It should be towards the bottom and named NAND Flash. I'll just copy and paste it into my NAND and CPU key folder. Let's go back to JTAG tool. Click the Reset Glitch option, then click on what motherboard you have, followed by choosing the NANDX once again for writing the file back to your NAND. Now, click Advanced Mode. Then click on the right bin button. You will then be prompted to select a NAND. Select the Flash Bin file. A DOS application will launch and your Flash Bin image will be written back to the Xbox's NAND. This will take as long as it took to read the NAND. It does take several minutes for this to finish. All right, you're done with all the programming necessary. Close everything up and let's get over to the Xbox. Make sure your Cool Runner side switch is set to NOR before you turn on the console. There you have it. You're now ready to have some fun. Now you can turn your console off and remove the USB and NAND wires from the Team Executors, NANDX, and QSBs. When that's all done, just assemble the console and you're ready to rock. This has been a Johnny Guns how-to video. 
To find out more, go to www.johnnyguns.com. Also, follow me on Twitter at xjohnnyguns_x. Take care and best of luck.